Investigates digging deeper into the mental health crisis impacting our children. Right now, nearly 100 kids are stuck in hospital emergency departments all across Massachusetts in limbo, waiting for psychiatric care. Our Mike Bodette has one family's frustrating fight for treatment and why one insider calls this a complete disaster. It's full-blown crisis. There are not available beds for kids. This mom is desperate to find help for her teenage son. He has a diagnosis of bipolar. He has a diagnosis of PTSD. She asked us not to use her last name to help protect his identity. The pandemic impacted everyone, especially people suffering from mental health issues. Our son said, I'm not okay. I need help. Um, I feel like I'm going to hurt somebody or myself. So they brought him to a local hospital emergency room. He sat in that ER for six days without any movement. Then the hospital told them there wasn't a psychiatric bed available anywhere in the state and sent their son home. We told them, no, you can't discharge our son. He's not safe. He hasn't had treatment. Ten days later, he blew up, you know, and it was so much worse the second time. And we had police involvement and the trauma. The cycle continued with their son back isolated in a room in another ER. Horrible, horrible for our son. No air, no windows. You can go to the bathroom and back to your room. This is inhumane. So there he is day after day after day after day. We're waiting 19 days, 19 days until we finally get a bed on an adult unit. The problem is known as emergency department or ED boarding, where people in hospital emergency rooms are waiting for psychiatric inpatient beds. Numbers from the Massachusetts Health and Hospital Association show it's an ongoing issue. 247 children were waiting in emergency departments at the end of March. That number dipped to 99 as of this past week. Well, I'm a therapist who works with kids and families who are in crisis. This child therapist agreed to talk with us about the extent of the problem she sees firsthand every day if we concealed her identity. I am seeing a complete disaster and a lack of resources that are putting kids and families at risk every day. State Senator Cindy Friedman is chair of the Committee on Healthcare Financing and has a child with a serious mental illness. What is the solution to fixing this problem? We still have to start treating mental illness exactly like we treat other medical conditions. Beacon Hill has already given $10 million for adolescent beds and $120 million for loan repayment programs to help recruit and retain mental health professionals. The Senate has passed the Mental Health ABC Act 2.0 aimed at addressing barriers to care and it's now in the House. It would create an online portal to help find open beds and require all hospital emergency departments to have a behavioral health clinician on site to evaluate and stabilize people admitted to the ER with mental health issues. And it's complicated and it's, it's expensive and there's no easy way, you know, there's not a pill that you give somebody and, okay, you're all better. This mom hopes people are paying attention and that they push their elected officials to prioritize adding resources to help children who are suffering like her son. If this were any other illness, we would get the help. But this is mental illness. Nearly $200 million that's supposed to help address the mental health crisis by creating a behavioral health trust fund is in legislative limbo. The legislature approved it, but the governor vetoed it last month, saying he supports the fund and its goals, but believes the way the legislature set it up creates a bureaucratic process that won't address the crisis quickly enough. Mike Bodette, Five Investigates.